Hey everyone, QB King 77 here from the Android Creative Syndicate team here uh, doing a video giving my review of the Samsung Epic Touch 4G. Well, the Galaxy S2 Epic Touch 4G is the proper name of it. Um, I've, I've had a chance to uh, basically test it for a few days. Uh, I had it all weekend. I've I still have not rooted it and flashed the ROM yet. I'm completely completely stock. I have been since I got it so basically I'm just gonna give a quick review of uh, what I experienced as well as just awesome features so initially I'm gonna go ahead and go over the hardware basically the outside of the phone uh, as you can see on the back side you have uh, a nice back cover it says Galaxy S2 and Sprint right there it is kind of uh, rugged it's it's got a little grippy feel it's got some texture to it so it's it is going to be pretty grippy it's that's a very nice feature to it since when you're holding it it allows some extra grip uh, you have a speaker down here which is in the bottom left and I, I might add the speaker is very good um, despite it being very small it is it works very well it, the music volume when I play over speaker is very loud so it works very well um, you also have an 8 megapixel camera right here with LED flash underneath it. Um, I cannot say how, I, I, can, I can't explain how nice pictures are. Pictures are really great when you use this phone and as well as video capture. Uh, I'm, I'll be sure to do a video um, just with video capture using this. I'll upload that to YouTube and let you guys see what it looks like. But it is very great video capture as well as pictures. Pictures are amazing as well. It does take 1080p uh, video recording. So that's just a nice feature right there. Uh, on the bottom of the phone, you do have the micro USB slot and the microphone right there. The little hole. So uh, that's where the micro USB. I do like it have being on the bottom though that is very nice um for some reason like if i'm in the car i plug it in the car charger it is nice to have it on the bottom or on the top i'm not a fan of it being on the side the uh charging port to be on the side for some reason just because i do like it being on the top or bottom that's just my personal preference uh so it is nice having it being on the bottom just such just like the nexus the nexus uh S4G is on the bottom as well as you can see. So Nexus S4G has it on the bottom, so is the Epic Touch 4G. So um, you have uh, a couple buttons on the side. You got volume up and down, and you have the power button on the right side. So you got power, volume up, volume down. Uh, those are the only three external buttons that you do have on the device. Um, so you don't have a dedicated camera button, which um, I do prefer to have a dedicated camera button, but it is, I guess, no big deal if it doesn't have one, especially because the camera is so great. Uh, but on the top of the uh, device, you got the headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, on the screen, you've got a uh, menu button, home button, back button, search button, four buttons down at the bottom that... Uh, to have the option for haptic feedback when you press them, uh, which means they'll vibrate when you press them. Uh, up at the top here, you have the speaker right here. You've got uh, a two megapixel front facing camera right here, which is really nice. Uh, the camera's, it's, it's really nice for being two megapixel front camera. Um, you can take pictures in rapid succession pretty quickly. Uh, there's a little wait time, but you do, you can take them pretty quickly after you take them, which is very nice. The uh, the front-facing camera is great, and it's I, it's great for video chat as well. It works very well. There's a couple of sensors right here, and you do have an LED light right there. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it is blinking. Um, it'll blink red when you do have a notification. It also uh, can blink blue as well. I believe those are the only two colors that they do blink. But as you can see, it is blinking red. Just to let you know there is a either a new message, new text, new email, any of that good stuff. But I do like having a notification LED light right there. So that's another cool feature right there. But now let's go ahead and turn on the phone and check out the, uh, basically the uh, software of the phone. As you can see, you have, this is the stock lock screen. Uh, it is very cool. You can just swipe this screen anywhere you want and it unlocks the device. So like that, unlocks the device. Also, if you do have a missed call, there's a little bar that pops up over here and you can slide that over to go to your missed calls. Or if you have a, a text message, you can a little bar will pop over here and you can slide it over and that'll go to your missed calls as well. So that's a very cool lock screen. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but one of the um, things that I have noticed with this phone is it does take a little while to 
uh, turn on the screen once I press the power button. That is one of the main problems I do have with this phone. There aren't many problems I do have, but that is one of them. Um, you'll, as you'll see, I'll try. I'll press it, pull my finger away, and then you'll see the screen does take a little delay to turn on. So I'll press it. There it is. See how long that did take to turn on. I'll do it again. It doesn't always do it, but it uh, it does do it some of the time, and it, it is kind of annoying sometimes. I'll press it, and it pops up. Um, some people have said I, I've read that it is caused by the SD card. When I do take out my SD card, though, I still do get lag like that. It might help a little bit, but I still do get lag, uh, screen wake lock lag when I do press that button like that. So that is one issue that I have had with this phone. So uh, just a heads up there. Um, I'm, I'm obviously not going to only point out the good things. I'll point out some bad stuff that I have noticed as well. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, this is the main home screen. of It does have TouchWiz 4, which is the latest TouchWiz uh, user interface that Samsung does come out with. Uh, as you can see, you got uh, buttons down here, application drawer. Uh, you got seven home screens that you uh, have right here. I have customized them to my liking, as you can see. You can press and hold. Lets you allows you to add widgets, folders, shortcuts, or change your wallpaper if you'd like. Uh, you can swipe through. It's it's really cool. The interface that TouchWiz 4 is. I do like it a lot. I'm I am kind of a fan of TouchWiz 4, um, but it, it does a lot have uh, cool features to it. Go to my app drawer real quick. As you can see, uh, it's got horizontal uh, pages um, that you can scroll through. It is continuous scrolling, so you can just keep going and going and going. No matter how many pages that you do have, you can press on the button. It'll scroll through if you want to go quickly to one page or the other, which is uh, very cool as well. You got these buttons right here. You can quickly go to a different uh, screen by pressing the buttons down here, which is which is very nice. Or you can press and hold on these buttons and slide it over, and it goes in between the screens really quickly if you need to, uh, which is which is really cool. It's a nice aesthetic feature that this does have. You also have uh, widgets that come with it, Samsung widgets. As you can see, you got one of them, the weather widget. You got a clock widget. You got the news widget. Um, you have a calendar widget, a nice big calendar widget right there if you use the calendar a lot. Um, you Just many other Samsung widgets. As you can see, you got... Uh, Agenda, bookmarks, all those good widgets, uh, different clock options, many ones that Samsung has provided for you that uh, don't really come with Android. You got a power widget right there in case you want to add different uh, power settings that don't come with the notification bar. But uh, anyways, uh, it does have up at the top stock gingerbread battery icon up there. Uh, nice 3G icon as well, and cool signal bars. Signal bars. I do like the theming of those. Um, I, for some reason, I just I just like them a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down. Nice gray, grayish black uh, notification bar, and these quick panel widgets are great. That is another TouchWiz Samsung implemented thing that isn't on most uh, Android phones, which is very cool. You got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, sound, uh, and 4G. Those are some very awesome. Uh, features to have especially since they are pretty much the most used things uh, so you have quick access to those which is very nice uh, right now I'm on 3G um, my 3G speeds have been fine with on this phone I haven't had any loss of signal issue I believe that is a known issue the Sprint knows about it that some people have been having um, I believe the 3G data just goes away and doesn't come back even if you're in a good signal area it is a known issue. I, I believe rebooting the phone will help. Uh, also, if you do a factory reset, it should uh, make it go away. But I, that is a known issue with this phone. I haven't experienced it at all. I've had great signal, great 3G speeds. Uh, so I've had no issues there with any of that. So just a heads up there that that is a known issue. If you're experiencing it with your Epic Touch 4G, go ahead and take it to Sprint. They know about it. So just a heads up there. Uh, inside, it has uh, 16 gigs of internal storage. What that means is you can put music, pictures, any of that good stuff on your inter internal storage and it'll act as a micro SD card or just an SD card, just a, basically a storage device. The phone also does have uh, an external SD card, a micro SD card slot that you can put uh, an expandable memory in the back. It's behind the back cover. Just uh, stick a micro SD card in there. It's uh, up to. It supports up to 32 gigabytes of a micro SD card. So just a heads up there, if you do need some extra storage, you uh, can use a micro SD card if you so choose. So that's very nice right there. Uh, 
as the display um the display is great uh it's really it's a super amoled plus display i haven't noticed really a difference between super amoled plus and super amoled but i do love super amoled displays i haven't uh I've used a HTC phone, I've used Motorola phones. I do enjoy Super AMOLED the best. Uh, it's definitely by far my favorite type of display. It's everything so crystal clear, the colors are great, it's so bright, and I just I just really do like Super AMOLED displays. The screen is huge, 4.52 inches, which is it's by far the biggest phone I've used, and I do like it a lot. Um, it hasn't uh, really been like a burden, anything like that. Uh, it's so thin too um, that it really just makes up for the, the screen size. The screen size, I, I really do like it. In my opinion, I do enjoy the bigger screen as opposed to a smaller screen. Um, it fits great in my pocket. I've had no issues at all with it being too big. Anything like that, if you can notice, it is extremely thin. It's one of the thinnest phones I have used. I can go ahead and just, uh, hang on, let me uh, put it up to a uh, Nexus S 4G just to show you, kind of compare. The uh, Nexus S 4G is actually a little bit thicker than the Epic Touch 4G. So just a, a, a comparison there, the screen size is smaller on the Nexus S 4G, but just, it's thinner on the Epic Touch. And it's also extremely light. We've had those big wind storms. I sometimes felt like when it was in my hand, it would just fly away because of how light it was. But anyways, as I said, TouchWiz 4, it comes stock with Android 2.3.4. I'm going to go to Settings, About Phone. As you can see, Android version 2.3.4. If you press on it rapidly, get this nice picture. So there's a little hidden feature if you guys do want to check that out on your phone. Um, just, just a little uh, cool thing to know about your phone. But uh, as you can see, Android 2.3.4. Right there, which is not gingerbread, obviously, so that's uh, very nice to have. Uh, camera app, as I said, the camera is great. Um, it takes amazing pictures. The LED light's great as well. Uh, you can just go ahead and snap one real quick. Works great. Um, it's, it doesn't take too long to load the image either after you take it, so that's very nice as well. So it's got it's got cool uh, settings as well that you can play with within the camera app, which which is very nice. Uh, also, uh, it's got an amazing messaging app. I really do like the messaging app. I'm going to go ahead and go to it. I sent a couple goofy texts to numbers, but as you can see, it's got bubble style uh, threaded text messaging. Uh, as you can see, yellow and uh, light blue um, are the two colors that they've decided to use. Uh, you got, uh, obviously, this with a nice contact picture right there. But what's cool about it is you can go into landscape mode, just turn the phone over, as you can see, it goes into landscape mode, and you get to, uh, you click on it, and it stays over there, and it just shows your, uh, your text messages right there. You can click on the other one, and it goes to it, back and forth, just like that. So that's very cool. I, I, I do enjoy that feature a lot. Um, you, you get the option to just kind of view different text messages over here, and you can tap to reply. Just pops up the keyboard. I installed the gingerbread keyboard from the market. Uh, you get three um, keyboard options. Going to go to input method. You get gingerbread. Well, you don't. I'm sorry. You don't get three options. You get two options that come stock with the phone. I installed gingerbread keyboard from the market since that's the one I like to use. I do like to use swipe as well. It comes with swipe and Samsung keypad. This is the Samsung keypad. It is. It's pretty nice. Um, I haven't really had any issues with it. I'm just kind of not a fan of it. For some reason, I just. I, I prefer the gingerbread keyboard, so and that, that's a pretty cool feature, feature, pretty cool keyboard that comes with it, and also swipe, which is uh, a very nice to have. You can just say, hey, how are you? So that's pretty cool right there. Swipe keyboard is very fast and works well. It doesn't show a pop-up screen to give you options anymore. It gives you the nice uh, options right up here in case you want to uh, choose a different word, which is very cool to have. Um, you also have a nice, basically a music app. I enjoy, I listen to music a lot on my phone, so it's it's very nice to have a, a nice music app. Uh, if you do want to play a song, I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume off. Um, if you do want to play a song, I can just go ahead and go to a song, go to now playing, hit play. It's playing the song. I'm going to go ahead and hit home, and I'm going to swipe down on my notification bar. But as you can see, you've got back, pause, and uh forward in within the notification bar which is very awesome i do love having this feature if i'm 
inside an app I want to go change a song I can just swipe down and uh, hit next which is very cool and also go to my lock screen you have lock screen music controls as well I can pause and I can uh, hit play and I can go forward skip go back which are which is very awesome right there so that's my my fit by far my favorite music app I have used on any Android phone so nice job Samsung well done with that music app you can press and hold the home button you get all these recent apps and you got a task manager as well right there shows your running apps as you can see messaging and music I can just hit exit on music it'll shut off my music and it'll exit the app so that's not running in the background which is very nice which takes which will help save battery which takes me to what I want to talk about is the battery life on this epic touch uh, it comes with an 1800 milliamp battery and it's amazing. Um, I can't get over how good the battery life is on this phone. By far the best battery life with any Android phone I've used. Um, I can prob with with pretty heavy usage. I can get probably 20 hours of battery life, which means I can go throughout the day without having to plug it into any other charger and still last through the day and just right before I go to bed plug it in and charge it right back up and do the same thing the next day which is awesome a great feature I don't have to try and get a quick charge out of my car anything like that um, just try and plug it in for a good five ten minutes to get an extra little extra battery I don't have to do that with this phone so if battery life is a big issue for you I would highly recommend this phone since battery life is so good on this phone it's also really fast too really fast and snappy you don't get any lag whatsoever it has a 1.2 gigahertz uh, dual core processor which makes it extremely fast and snappy um, to I, I haven't I, I kind of want to say something about this I don't know if anyone else is experiencing this but a couple times today my phone would kind of freeze and maybe about 10 seconds later it would unfreeze and then just return back to normal um, that happened twice today but um, I think it hasn't happened any time before today so I'm wondering I just did a reboot and it hasn't happened since I rebooted my phone so I'm wondering if it was just a little a little glitch and I just a reboot would have helped so I don't know if anyone else had that issue I'm it happened a couple times I'm gonna if it happens again I'm gonna go ahead and do a hard reset of my device I'll probably do a video showing you how to do a hard reset I might just do it just, uh, just so I can show you guys how you can do that in case you're experiencing that issue so and, and because uh, Good friend of mine, uh, Rob, owner of uh, AC the ACS team, he uh, sh he said he had that issue as well, and he did the hard reset, and it hasn't affected his phone anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and uh, I'll do a video showing you guys how to do that in case you're having that issue as well. Uh, but anyways, I did go out of town this weekend as well, so I needed to use the GPS on this phone. I was I was a little worried since uh, on the Epic 4G it has the old uh, one with a keyboard it did have GPS issues and I was worried that I, I haven't did any I didn't do any research on the phone on how the GPS was working so I just went ahead and turned it on and plugged in where I needed to go and it worked great I got GPS lock instantly it worked awesome and I was extremely pleased with that uh, the, it was cloudy outside so I didn't have clear view of the satellites, but it still got an instant lock, and it took me exactly where I needed to go, uh, and it worked very well. I, Google Nav new, Google Navigation is really great. I do love that application. So that it, it does come with the phone, as you can see, navigation right there, which uh, is very cool. GPS application that works very well, and this phone's GPS works great as well. So just a heads up there if anyone's uh, worried about the GPS on this phone, the GPS does work great. Another uh, feature that works great is Bluetooth. I, I did test it on a couple different devices, a couple of my friends' devices, and Bluetooth worked great uh, on those devices. So uh, I know the old Epic had issues with Bluetooth as well uh, but this one hasn't had any issues at all that I know of uh, with Bluetooth. So I also want to point out uh, as I said 3G speeds are uh, good if not better than my old Epic as well as signal strength is good if not better than my Epic so just a heads up there that no signal strength is sacrificed. Uh, I don't have a chance I don't have 4G in my area so I'm not too sure how 4G works with this phone. I've I haven't heard of any issues at all with 4G, so just a heads up there. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick test of the browser for you guys. I'm going to go to the internet application and um, I'm going to go to the ACS website, acsyndicate.net. 
So go, gonna go ahead and go to that. I do have Dolphin Browser Mini installed. That is my preferred browser, but I'm using the stock browser right here. So just so I can show you guys with the stock browser that does come with the Epic Touch. It's loading on 3G, so uh, give it a little bit of time. It's not on Wi-Fi. But uh, as you can see, it loads up pretty nicely and um, it is pretty smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in, zoom out. But uh, overall, pinch zooms works good. I don't have any issues at all with that. It's very smooth, so um, nice job there. This uh, stock browser works very well. But another cool feature that the stock browser has, if you pinch enough, it's uh, if you pinch it, it's gonna take you to your windows and you can open up a new window. And then if you pinch uh, that one enough, or you can hit menu and go to windows and go scroll through the windows open. It's kind of like tabs opened. So just a heads up there, if you want to pinch it down enough, it does open your windows right there and you can scroll through them, which is cool for the to, to have for the stock browser, as I said. Now I can go ahead and I'm actually going to run a couple benchmarks for you guys. I know I don't rely very much on benchmarks at all. I don't really run them ever, but I know for you guys I'm going to go ahead and run a couple. I'm going to do Quadrant Standard and Linpack. I'm gonna go ahead and run Quadrant Standard first. I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna hit Run Full Benchmark. It's gonna go ahead and run through the benchmark. I'm sure it'll go pretty quick since this phone is so great. I'm sure benchmark tests, I haven't run any benchmark tests. This is the first time running these benchmark tests on this phone. But uh, the, the quality of this, the, this screen is amazing and the quality of these images are very awesome as well. While this is running, I'm uh, also gonna talk about how the call quality of this is great. The speaker on the front right here, it's, it's very well. I haven't had any issues with call quality or call drops at all. So uh, call quality works really well. So now that the benchmark is done running, wow, as you can see, uh, your device 3426, which is very high. Uh, that doesn't surprise me at all since it does have a dual core processor, but that's a very good score even being on stock. So especially being on stock, that's a very great score for uh, Quadrant Standard. I'm gonna go ahead and run Linpack really quickly. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit run multi-thread up at the top. The higher the number, the better. Um, as you can see, M-Flops is 84. I believe on the Epic it was like 14. So that's considerably better on this phone as opposed to the old Epic. So, and it also went really quickly. The The test ran through very quickly. As you can see, it'll vary based on how many times you do it. But just a heads up there that uh, benchmarks are really good on this phone and it's very fast. I've only had a couple issues that I have pointed out to you guys. So just so you guys know of those issues that I have had personally. I'm not sure if it's a widespread issue, but just letting you guys know that I have had those couple issues. But anyways, that is my review of the Samsung Epic Touch 4G. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do comparison videos as well. I might do a um, comparison of the Epic Touch and the Motorola Photon 4G, maybe some other ones if you guys do want to uh, contribute and add, add, request any videos you'd like to see from me. I'd happily uh, take those requests from you. But as I've said throughout the video, this phone is an amazing phone. Um, I really, only had those couple of issues with it, but other than that, it's so fast and just the battery life's amazing that it's it's really hard to beat this great of a phone. The screen's amazing, it's thin, it's light, the screen's big, it's it's really easy to see, easy to look at. It's, it's just an overall a really great phone. I would highly recommend it to anyone on Sprint looking to buy a new phone for themselves. But uh, anyways, if you do have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment. I'll be happy to respond, help you guys out with any problems that you have. If you have any with this phone, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at QBKing77. All links are going to be in the description of the video. And uh, feel free to subscribe to me as well for future how-to videos. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys like, like the video and give it a thumbs up if you like it. Thanks, guys.